G'day guys. Righto, let's talk about something that um, is, I guess, a bit of a sensitive subject. Something about um, the some of the random things that you can be caught up doing while being an apprentice. Some of the things that may not relate to your trade directly and confuse you a little bit as to why you're doing them. Let's have a little chat about that, eh? I think it's important. This van needs a clean, that's for sure. So I'm gonna get stuck into giving this van a good scrub, and give it a good wipe over and a tidy up. It is desperate for it, it really is. I'm gonna show you some footage. And um, yeah, guys, let's uh, let's chat on the other side and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, let's talk about some oddball stuff that I've done over the past few weeks. You'd be surprised. G'day guys, Chris here, Midlife Carpentry. Welcome back to another instalment. So yeah, what we're gonna talk about today is um, basically the random and different jobs that I've done as an apprentice carpenter. Now I'm a second year apprentice, I'm coming into third year, uh, I think in June thereabouts, uh, which is which is crazy. It's hard to believe that time is flying that quick. But I've gone through and um, I've done quite a few interesting jobs in uh, over the past two years kind of thing. So I just wanted to share with you guys some of the random stuff that I have done and hopefully it might help some other guys to understand that sometimes you're not always going to be doing the exact thing that you think you should be doing as a as an apprentice basically okay so look I've done jobs anything from um, probably one of the most I suppose random and oddball ones that I never ever would have thought I would have done is is um, potholes so I have had the opportunity to fill potholes so bitumen potholes with uh, cold mix, uh, cold mix uh, bitumen, which meant basically digging out the hole, roughing up a little bit, compacting where I needed to, and then um, laying the bitumen down and compacting that as well. So I've, I've done that a couple of times now. So it's it's pretty, it's kind of a thing that I understand a little bit more about now, but it's not really something that I was expecting I'd be doing as an apprentice carpenter. Another one is plastering and painting. Now that is another another big big one that I've been fairly well involved with. Um, I suppose with my background and some of the skills I had before I started in the trade, um, uh, the, the boss is obviously um, able to utilize those skills and has put me forward to do things like um, plastering work and patchwork and stuff like that. So these little jobs come up from time to time with the clientele that we deal with. Um, and yeah, I guess it's handy for the boss to have a bloke who can go in, uh, patch any walls, plaster it up and then paint it as well. So I, I guess that's a bit of a benefit for, for him. And I, I don't mind it, but again, it's that whole, I'd rather be doing more carpentry work than focused on, you know, doing a stint of plastering. Yeah. 
couple of other random things we've done is uh, desk assembly. We've we've put desks together, especially in a big office fit out recently. We've done um, that's coming to an end. Hopefully that'll settle down over the next few days. Um, We've done uh, furniture removals as well. We've moved furnitures around. I've taken stickers off shop fronts. I've, um, I've pressure cleaned buildings ready for paint. Like, you know, the, these random tasks keep popping up and keep coming up. And that's all part of working for a builder, I guess. And, and it's the line of work that he's involved in. So you need to understand that. You need to see that that is a part of it. Um, can feel a bit demoralizing. Personally, I, I have felt a little bit flat sometimes doing some of these tasks. Um, because I'd much rather be, you know, cutting timber and and, and, and lifting trusses and, and, and setting up wall frames and, and things like that and getting involved in that or doing finished carpentry, you know. But it's, it's, it's not the case. It can't happen all the time. And um, I just need to realize that, that it, it's all part of the process. And, um, yeah, it's part of the fun. Now, don't get me wrong about my job and my role and my position. Like, I, I still love the company that I work for. I enjoy working for them. Um, like I said, the carpentry side is a bit lacking, but I know that we've got a massive office fit out coming up too. So you, you take the good with the bad and, um, and and you roll with it basically. Now, I have been giving some incredible opportunities, of course, with the company as well. So in saying the things of not doing a lot of carpentry for a while, also, on the other hand, I can say that I've been giving opportunities such as, you know, being involved in a solid timber garage, like a, a carport kind of thing, um, made out of fresh red gum. So it's, um, yeah, little opportunities pop up every now and then, and that's kind of a part of working for a builder who's actually quite diverse. Like it's, yeah, it it kind of opens your eyes a little bit and gives you a bit more of a sense of what's out there and what avenues you can sort of head down and stuff as well as an apprentice or as a tradesman later on down the track. So, yeah. The van is looking a million bucks. It does. It does feel good to be able to jump in a vehicle that's that's clean. So all the all the dust has been taken off all the console and the externals looking good. It's looking pretty Mickey Mouse. I've got some terrible rust stains though. I really don't know how they've um, come about. Um, it's almost like uh, grinding sparks, but it's on all the level surfaces of of the van. So. Uh, on the bonnet quite considerably, it's on the roof, it's on the on the lips on the sides of the details, um, just above the door. Um, so I'm not really sure what the go is or, or where it come from, but if you out there have dealt with that before and you've got any ideas on how to remove it, um, yeah, throw it in the comments, give us a suggestion, that'll be good. Righto guys, now I'm not going to blab on too much more for this little, uh, this little one, so I just wanted to try and help some of you guys out there, some of you apprentices out there that are probably dealing with the fact that, hang on, why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing plumbing work? Why am I not being an electrician? Why am I stuck running cables the entire first year or second year and stuff? Sometimes it is what it is and you just got to work through it, guys. You really do. You need to try and find a way to work through it. Whatever you need to do to work through it, put the music on, um, have a laugh with it, make sure try and work with someone that you can you know, spin a yarn with or something. like Little things like that will help you through the process, okay? And eventually, hey, you, you'll be given bigger tasks and bigger jobs and stuff. And if you're not, you need to suss out and make the decision. Okay, do I need to move away from this employer? Do I need to sit down and have a chat to them? Do I need to try and encourage um, a little bit more um, forward knowledge in, in your direction, if that kind of makes sense? And I know I'll be having that conversation as well at third year too, definitely. So, And I'm, I'm sure my boss knows. Like he, he knows where my head's at. He knows what direction I want to head and what I'm, what I'm keen to learn and stuff too. But um, I also understand that, you know, it is, a, a, what do you say, a diverse business. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just got to deal with it. So yeah, 
Yeah, it eats at me in sec. In fact, if there is a guy in Cairns out here, if there's any chippies in Cairns, all right, who are willing to help me out, who are willing to, you know, give me a day on a Saturday every now and then, give me a couple of hours on a Saturday, come round and, and let me do a little bit of carpentry with you. Doesn't matter what it is, like uh, ideally more carpentry based, so doing a deck or uh, help, help do some framing or something like that. If there's any guys out there, any of you guys in Cairns that watch me and hey, I, I could give you a plug on the channel. I can um, throw some footage up on the channel and stuff for you, and do some back, do something for you for Facebook or whatever. But in return, but um, I don't expect to get paid. This is completely voluntary. It's just to try and find a little bit more knowledge and experience in the carpentry game, and that's 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 what I'm chasing. Um, yeah. So if there's anyone out there who's watching and going, hey, I wouldn't mind getting Chris around for a bit of a go. Yeah, we'll give him a crack, or we'll sort him out. We'll give him some work, and we'll load him up. So. You know, if, you, if you've got that sort of, get in touch with me. Instagram, guys. Jump on Instagram, Midlife Carpentry on Instagram. You'll find me there. Shoot me a message. Let me know. And, um, yeah, as always, always open to any discussions and stuff you might want to have. So if, you, if you're feeling down in the dumps and over your apprenticeship and stuff, obviously shoot me a message. It's all about trying to get people through the apprenticeship process. That's that's what we need to do. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm nearly two years, uh, well, I'm over two years in now, coming into third year, and it, it's still a process. So you've just got to work your way through it. You want to get qualified. That's kind of where you want to be. So, yeah. All right, guys. Build on legends. Thanks for everything. We'll uh, chat again soon, eh? See ya.